So I've been collecting stamps from North Borneo at a slow and steady pace for the last few months now. And as you can see from the title of this video, we're going to be looking at these two stamps that show two ethnic tribal men that practiced headhunting. Yep, you heard me right, headhunting. Let's take a look at the smaller of the two stamps on offer. It was printed by Waterloo and Sons on unwatermarked paper in sheets of 100. This was the first of a set of nine stamps that were first issued in 1894. And this bicolored brown and black stamp shows a Dayak chieftain in full traditional dress. Now the Dayak are the indigenous people of Borneo and their name literally means up country. So I'm guessing they lived in the hills of the jungle. All right, so how do we know that this guy on the stamp is a headhunter? Well, if you look at this here, and this section on the front here, that, my friend, is the engraving of human hair shown on the scabbard of the chief's waist and on the handle of his sword, which is also known as a parang. We've got the denomination of the stamp one cent, top left, right, and in letters along the bottom. The lettering state of North Borneo at the top with postage and revenue just here. This became a forerunner of the modern pictorial stamps. And this little vignette is all placed within the borders of this framework here. So that's the first stamp dealt with. And before we look at the second, I think I need to mention briefly that the reason the practice of headhunting was so common within these tribes was that they believed that if they took the heads of their enemies, they took on their power and in some cases their soul. This was considered a right of manhood and those tribes that practiced it gained fierce reputations as warriors. The spread of colonial rule in the 1800s and the introduction of Christianity greatly reduced this practice and it was eventually banned in the 19th century. However, even today it is still considered an acceptable act of revenge in remote tribes, which is just unbelievable. Anyway, let's take a look at the second stamp and see what this fella is all about. Issued in 1931, this particular stamp was the first of eight which celebrated the 50th anniversary of the British North Borneo Company's charter, which had been granted in 1881. And we can see those dates in the top left and right hand corners there. The stamps were engraved by John A. Harrison, who was the chief portrait engraver at Waterloo and Sons at the time. And this three cent value for local inland letters depicts the head of a murut in this ornate frame here. The value of the stamp is stated in Jawi script on the left, Chinese on the right, and English down below. The original photo of this murat was taken by G. C. Woolley in 1909. These set of eight stamps were issued on the 1st of January 1931 and were removed from circulation on the 1st of January 1932. So they only had a short period of time to be postally available. And as a result, only 388,422 of this particular three cent stamp were sold in London and Borneo during its year of issue. Now let's have a quick chat about the Murat tribesmen in the center. Murat means hill people in English, and this particular tribe were one of the last to give up headhunting. Did you know that any young man that wanted to get married in this tribe 
was forbidden to do so until they had claimed a head that they could give to the girl's family. That's got to be one of the weirdest and most gruesome wedding gifts ever. Now I mentioned earlier that the practice of headhunting was banned in Borneo around the middle of the 19th century. Well, during World War II, the colonial government allowed the revival of headhunting when Borneo was occupied by the Japanese, provided that the tribes hunted the Japanese soldiers. Man, humanity is crazy at times. Right, I think that's it for this video. My aim is to try and collect the rest of this 1931 set of stamps, as I do like these ones in particular. I don't think it's going to be cheap, so we'll see how far I get in a future video. Okay, if you've enjoyed this one, then please subscribe to the channel for more content like this. There's the Buy Me A Coffee link if you fancy it. So until the next one, bye for now.